Okay, so got a little bit of a topic here about wind turbines and their use of oil. I've been running into a lot of people on the internet, on social media sites, who seem to believe that wind turbines consume a whole bunch of oil, either in manufacturing of them or in the normal operation of them. And one of the big topics, uh, there's, there's sort of two topics here. There's lubricant, lubricating oil, that's used to lubricate the moving parts of the wind turbine. And then there's the resins, the plastic resins that are used to manufacture the various components, like the blades of the wind turbine. So let's think about the oil in the lubricating side of things first. So we got a bottle of engine oil here, so you can think of that as an analogy to what we're talking about. Um, wind turbines spin at a relatively low speed. They have a high torque but low speed. So you have a 20 revolutions per minute a rotor spun by the wind, pushed by the wind, that turns and there's a gearbox in there that converts that low speed, high torque into high speed, low torque to drive the generator to make electricity. Because you can make the generators more compact if they spin faster. Now there's also what they call direct drive wind turbines that are, um, you know, don't have a gearbox. But the oil issue is focused on the gearbox. So we're going to talk about geared wind turbines with a gearbox. A gearbox is just like your car's transmission. You have a set of gears that converts the high speed engine shaft into the lower speed wheel that pushes the car down the road. So it's got lubricant in there that lubricates all those gears. And that lubricant, how often do you change the lubricant, the, the transmission fluid in your car? Not that often, right? You know, that's not a normal maintenance item. That's pretty infrequent that we, <clears throat> that we do that. So the oil that's in the gearbox of wind turbine is exactly the same concept as the transmission fluid in your car. It's not something that you're burning, that you have to fill up every once in a while, that you have to replace all the time. It's not considered to be a consumable item. So people are very concerned about this. So there's 80 gallons of lubricating oil in every wind turbine. Oh my God, that's a lot of oil. We're, we're still dependent upon petroleum. But that oil's not being set on fire. So let's just think about this for a minute. So if we have our wind turbine, let's just give our, say that we have a five megawatt wind turbine. Five megawatts on a, you know, kind of a low producing site with a 30% capacity factor. That's kind of like a, a pretty low end site, wind, you know, wind farm site. That means that we have an average power output of 1.5 megawatts, right? 1.5 megawatts times 8760, 8760 hours per year gives us a annual production of 13,140 megawatt hours of electricity. So if we're going to think about the consumption of oil, we have to compare the oil that's used in these turbines versus oil that would otherwise be used as a fuel if the turbine did not exist. So the alternative to wind energy, typically, is you burn fossil fuel as a fuel source. You know, that's, that's the kind of clash that we see going on in this, you know, energy culture war. We have the usage of oil as a fuel, whereas here we have usage of oil either as a lubricant or as a raw material in the production of the device. So if we're making 13,140 megawatt hours with one wind turbine, Say we get rid of the wind turbine and we're going to use diesel fuel instead. And we're going to burn that diesel fuel in the most efficient combined cycle power plants that we, that we have. 60% efficiency. That's the best of the best. That is, when it comes to fuel burning power plants, combined cycle gives you the highest efficiency. So if we have 60% efficiency, 
That means we need 21,900 megawatt hours of diesel fuel, chemical energy, right, per year. And uh, diesel fuel contains 36 kilowatt hours per gallon. So what that means is I need 608,000 gallons of diesel fuel every single year to make the same amount of electricity as one 5 megawatt wind turbine. 608,000, 608, 000 gallons of diesel fuel. Or for our uh, liters guys, that's um, 2.3 million liters. 2.3 times 10 to the 6 liters per year for one 5 megawatt wind turbine. If you use diesel fuel in the most efficient power plant there is. Okay, so... Compare this uh, to the lubricant that's in that turbine, that gearbox. Let's just say they change the oil once a year, 80 gallons per year. That means that if you were to use diesel fuel in a combined cycle plant instead of, wind turbine, instead of the wind turbine, you would use 7,600 times more petroleum products than you do if you have the wind turbine. It's a, it, it's a factor of 7,000, 7,000, 7,000 times more oil would be used in a fossil fuel-based power generation system than the wind turbine. Okay, so the wind turbine, yes, in fact, it does use oil as a lubricant, but it doesn't light it on fire and use that as a source of energy. All right. The other thing that I've heard brought up with this is they need to manufacture the blades of the wind turbine. That's true. And normally these blades are made out of like an epoxy resin, a hydrocarbon, you know, some kind of a source of molecules is needed to manufacture these resins. The most convenient, readily available source of these molecules is oil and natural gas. And people who don't like renewable energy seem to be thinking this is a deal breaker. Oh, look at you guys, you need to use crude oil to manufacture the materials to build the wind turbines. Well, if that's the case, it doesn't even make sense to use wind turbines. You might as well just burn the fuel. All right, we can use the same logic as we just did with the lube oil. How much oil is actually in these blades? in this turbine. Let's just say this blade. So I don't have a weight value for 5 megawatt wind turbine, but let's just take the 15 megawatt Halley 8X or the Vestas V263-236 wind turbine. Big, big machines. So the Halley 8X um, give us like uh, 15 megawatts of power output. And if you put this in an offshore site, which these turbines are so big they can only go offshore, you get an average output of 7.5 megawatts. 7.5 megawatts, 50% capacity factor is kind of conservative for these machines. Gives us a annual electricity production of 65,700 megawatt hours. And if we burn the diesel fuel in our combined cycle plant, we need uh, 3,000,000 3 gallons of diesel fuel. Or 12 million liters of diesel fuel per year to equal one wind turbine electricity production. All right. Three million gallons. So the weight of one of these blades is about uh, 55 tons, 55 metric tons. Right? 55 metric tons is about um, 121,000 pounds. And there's three blades. So we're talking a total weight, a total blade weight of, of fiber reinforced plastic of about 360,000 pounds, 363,000 pounds. All right. 
in, of, of material in these blades. Only a portion of that is actually epoxy resin. The other portion is glass reinforcement. But let's just assume the whole thing is made out of petroleum products. So we have our um, turbine is generating the same amount of electricity as would be generated by 3 million gallons of diesel fuel. 3 million gallons. Three million, it's about 6.5 6 pounds per gallon. 19.5 million pounds of diesel fuel would be burned per year to give you the same amount of electricity as one wind turbine. One of these Halley 8X wind turbines. 19.5 million pounds. Each wind turbine's blades were what? What did I say? 360,000? There is 55 times more fuel burned, mass of fuel burned, than what is used to manufacture the blades. And that's only in one year. You got to remember that these blades last for 20 or 30 years. Just say an average of 25 years. So over the lifetime of this wind turbine, it will generate the equivalent of 1,350 times more energy than what was used to manufacture the blades in terms of petroleum, actual petroleum products. I mean, I could be off by a whole order of magnitude, like a factor of 10, and still be light years ahead of the game here. Like, if you have to burn fuel in order to generate the same amount of electricity as one of these machines, you're talking thousands of times more material in the terms of, in, in, the, in the content of fuel that you have to burn. And it's totally because fuel is one shot. You burn it once and it's gone. And after that, you gotta go back and get more. Whereas this stuff isn't consumed. You manufacture it once and it just goes and goes and goes and goes. You don't incinerate it and burn it up into ashes and gas in the normal operation of the machine. So the whole idea that wind turbines contain all this oil, it's like, well, yeah, they use, a, they use several tons of oil, 160 tons of material and a set of blades. Yeah, that's, oh my God, 160 tons. But the amount of electricity that you get from 160 tons of diesel fuel isn't that much. All right, 160 tons of diesel fuel. What do we get out of that? Okay, that's 320,000 pounds. That's 49,000 gallons. We get about a gigawatt hour, a thousand megawatt hours. All right, and this wind turbine produced like 50 times that in a year. So as far as the amount of materials used in energy technologies, fossil fuels are orders of magnitude, 10, 100, 1,000 times more than what we use here. So that's kind of the... The, the situation with the, with the usage of oil, the usage of fossil fuel material to either lube up or manufacture renewable energy. Of course, it's, re, it's something that's there, but the amount that's needed versus what you would need if you were to actually burn fossil fuels instead of doing this, it's like a drop in the bucket. So that's it. That's pretty much all, all there is for oil and wind turbines.